G'day, welcome to Pay It Forward. I've got a brand new project for you all today and I feel like I've been neglecting my quilting friends. So it's been a while since I did anything that was a little two dimensional, like a little mini quilt. I guess you could call this a mini quilt. Um, it's actually a little kite quilt wall hanging with that beautiful, lovely tail with all of those colorful bows on there. This is a fabulous stash buster. So you can dive into your scraps and these are amazing to personalize. They make the best gift. They're fabulous for craft fairs. They're great for selling online and also for personalizing. You can put all sorts of names, initials, dates, whatever you like. They make a great nursery gift as well for a new baby. I'm sure you're gonna have a million ideas. You're only limited by your imagination with this one. So I have the free pattern for you already. It is in the description box below. You will find that link. There's a little arrow at the corner, just here at the corner. You click on that, it'll drop down a description box and you'll find that free pattern link in there. All you need to do is print those pattern templates out on your own home printer. Do be sure to set your printer to be printing at actual size or perhaps A4 and do make use of the measuring bars that I have on each of those pattern pages there for you just to make sure that all of your pattern pieces are correct. I also include all of my seam allowances in all of my patterns so let's get busy making this beautiful little happy kite. So let's have a look here at what we're going to need to put together a kite. Now I am going with a Disney theme um, has anybody seen the movie Saving Mr. Banks? Um, absolutely fabulous movie and the quote from there is let's go fly a kite and I thought it was very in keeping with my Disney fabrics and I've made that split that into four so you've got options to really change up your look. I'm going to be putting a string of bunting weaving through there so I'm going to be doing it quite mixed media. Now I have given you that text that you can actually copy that and stitch over that which I've already done and it's much easier for you to go ahead and put your lettering on and do your embroidery before we put this together. I did mine using a heat erasable marker and I have just stitched over that with my back stitch with a pearl thread and I used an eight ply. You can of course use your embroidery threads. Um, another one that you can do for a baby's nursery, uh, the text would be lovely popped on there, which is fly high little one. So there's so much that you can do. You could just do um, a child's name, a birth date, all of those birth details. You could just do a fabulous initial. I'm sure you're going to just do amazing things with them. So I've got my pieces cut. Now each of those pieces are backed with my fusible woven cotton interfacing because we need some real stability to this. Our embellishments are going to be whatever, whatever suits your project. I'm going to be using some appliques. I'm going to add some buttons. Colourful buttons are going to be added throughout. And of course, as I said, my string of bunting. Now, the other thing that I have done is from my Disney fabric, I fussy cut a beautiful section there of Dumbo. That's going to go into this top corner. I'm going to be able to stitch that on. So remember that with your fabrics, you can fussy cut little details, put your fusible webbing on the back, and then that makes another feature there. So I think that works in well with my bunting weaving through. It will be lovely. So it's something you can build up as you go along. So for the back of our kite, we, we just need to have our already interfaced fabric, backing fabric ready. That's ready to go. Once we've assembled the front, we actually cut the back from this piece of fabric. And also we need something for the inside. Now you can use just normal quilt wadding or quilt batting, whatever you call it. Um, I'm going to be using fusible foam because I love it and it's perfect for this project. I love that it's lovely and flat and it has some bounce to it. It also is fusible on one side, so it's really handy. Again, I will be cutting that piece to suit once I have put that front together. 
Now the other thing we're going to need of course is something to be able to hang this little one. I just use a little D clip and a little piece of ribbon and that's going to be inserted into the top of the kite up here when we stitch it all together. Obviously you could just stitch that D ring to the back, you could just use a little slip ring, whatever you like. Um, and we're also going to need a kite tail. So I've just got a bit of braided cord and I've stayed with that natural look because it's in keeping with all of my colours. You can make that tail as long as you like. They look beautiful when they're hung flat on the wall and then you just pull up the tail a little and pin it um, to show off those lovely, uh, the little flags, the little bows that we add to the base. I've actually just added a, a bead to the bottom of my cord just to finish that off nicely and we're going to be sewing that in. Now this could also be ribbon, you might want to plait up some braided cord, absolutely anything can be used for this, anything that matches your project will be fine. So then we're going to be wanting to make the little bows that we tie on the tail and I have made them up in various colours. Now, I've made them to suit and complement and I've also done some of them double sided because when we tie these up of course we get the benefit of the two colours which is really nice. So that works for my project, it may not work for yours um, but so I've got and you can make as many as you like. So I've got four there and I will be adding the fifth which will be the black and white spot. I'm tying it in with my Dalmatians there. So what we do with this, well, this one is we take our pattern template, we have a double piece of fabric, suitable fabric, right sides together. We're just going to draw around that template, mark in our openings, and we just stitch exactly on that line, then cut that little bow out. It's so much easier. To do it that way than trying to match two pieces together. These are great quick projects for craft markets and definitely you can sell them online and custom make them in all sorts of amazing fabrics. You can also make them absolutely um, romantic and shabby in style, um, add lace and braids and all sorts of things, very lightweight sort of uh, ballerina type fabrics, tulle, all those sorts of things. I'm sure you get the idea. So for now we are going to start by, as I said, first of all, if you're going to be adding text, I recommend that you do that stitching first. And then our next step is we're going to take our two top pieces and we're going to sew the center seam. I've given you a five millimeter seam allowance throughout this. I think we just need that little bit more width and you'll notice that the corners don't go straight up into a point. It's because once we sew this all together and add our tab and our cord at the base, we will end up with a nice neat point at the top. So we need to just stitch our five millimeter seam allowance straight down that side. So then when we fold that out, we will have that and then we do exactly the same thing with our base pieces. We line those up and we are also going to stitch that centre front seam all the way down. I've now pressed those seams open and flat. Now it doesn't matter how small your project is or how simple it is pressing throughout is going to make all of the difference to your finish. So I've done that with both of those. So now we can put those right sides together and we're going to make sure that that center seam is perfectly lined up. And then we're just going to stitch same seam allowance straight across here. There we go. So that has my kite front assembled there and you can see I've gone ahead and pressed my little fussy cut piece there. I'm going to just stitch on the machine all the way around the outside edge of that one just to settle that one in place. So now is where you get to have a whole lot of fun and decorate this any way that you like. Now what you have to remember is we're going to be adding that backing foam on the back of this piece. So anything that you do now make sure that it is 
um, you're adding all of your items that are flat so perhaps anything that you're pressing on you can go ahead and add because we still need to be able to press over that so I won't be adding any button detail at this stage and I won't be adding anything that's quite 3D I will do that once we've got that um, that wadding on the back there so also that means that I can go ahead and plan out my bunting now I just like to use just a thread to get an idea of exactly how I want that bunting to be draped and I think I'm going to be starting down here bringing that up it can weave around and travel across and it's really nice for that sort of a real mixed media look if it does wind its way around and then of course I've got all of my little cut pieces of felt I've given you the template for those little flags and I'm just going to position those and they will follow all the way around using the colors that will work and you can see what a lovely effect that's going to be so you need to think carefully when you're planning your base colors what you're putting over it so that I'm just going to have a bit of a play with that and once I've got that all in place I'm going to use my heat erasable marker to draw that line in once I'm really happy with what I've got I'm going to draw that line in of that pearl thread that I've got there then I can take each of my little flag pieces remove the backing paper and pop them all on I can take this to the iron and press them all into place I am going to lose that line when I do that but then the little flags will be in place I'll be able to see exactly where that goes and I can redraw that before I go ahead and stitch it I'm going to be stitching my flag cord line in a top stitching thread I'm going to use my extra strong thread I rarely put it through the machine but I will this time because I really want that to show up so I'm going to have a bit of a play with this as I'm sure you will with yours get my design exactly how I want it and then I'll get those pressed and stitched into place and then we will come back to cut our piece of foam so here you can see my completed front well almost completed so I've got everything on there that is nice and flat as I was saying you can see that I've just used that top stitching thread in my machine to sew over that line that I made and I've just gone over just the top edge of each of those little flags and that holds them in place I'm not going to sew each one on in, in individually because they're really well fused to that fabric and it's not a garment or anything like that it's just a wall hanging so I've also pressed on my two little appliques there and I will be adding my buttons and my fabric yo-yos at the end so for now what we need to do of course is press it make sure you've removed all of those marker points and now we're going to add our fusible foam or perhaps your fusible quilt wadding and I've cut this piece to be just one centimeter smaller all the way around from the edge there so we've got a nice bit of room to be able to put our back on and be able to sew that seam when we turn it through this foam here is going to sit right on the edge which is exactly what we need so because I haven't put anything bulky on the front there I can take this now and get that foam fused in place with my hot iron and protective cloth so I now have that foam nicely pressed to the back there and I've added a couple of my little flat buttons whenever you're positioning positioning anything on the front here of your kite make sure that you remember that you've got a seam allowance going in there so you don't want to be running into trouble running into buttons or cutting off some of your design so just keep that in mind so now we can go ahead and we can flip that one over onto our already interfaced backing fabric so we're putting right sides together and I'm simply going to cut that back piece to fit that template exactly 
Now I have that back panel cut exactly to size and we're going to be able to sew this one up. Now the first thing you need to do of course is to add your little D-ring or whatever kind of attachment. It might just be a loop, just a loop of ribbon will enable you to hang this one up and I'm just going to slip that in between those two layers with just enough room for that ribbon to be incorporated into that seam as I stitch around. Do make sure when you're sewing that you go back and forth over those areas and we will do the same thing with that cord at the bottom and tuck that one in there as well and also really make sure that you stitch back and forth across there as we go around. You're going to need to leave an opening at the side here and I would make that opening probably I'm thinking around about 10 centimeters just somewhere right there on that lower panel because it's a nice straight edge and when we turn it all through and press it we're going to be able to turn those edges under and then we can do some top stitching around the edge so about a 10 centimeter opening mark that in and leave that there then we can go ahead and stitch all the way around so here I have my kite all stitched and turned through. So my opening was down the side here and I picked a busy area of my print to have my opening. It always helps disguise it a little more. And I've just pressed that all out, pushed out all those seams, pressed it out. Then I've gone ahead and sewn a top stitch just five millimeters in all the way around the outside edge. Now, my very clever quilting friends, you may want to actually put a quilt binding around this. You can go ahead and do that. I'm just trying to give you something quick and easy to do. So now you could go ahead and you could quilt that, machine quilt that any way you like. What I am going to do is I'm going to stitch in the ditch along that, th those two cross lines there. That's going to pull everything together and it's going to make it sit all nice and flat. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and add my final details there for those with those little yo-yos, those little fabric yo-yos. You can add anything else you like at this stage. So I'll get that done, then we'll come back and we'll have a look at making our little ties. So that completes my kite front. You can see that I've added all my final little detailing. Just remember when you're putting this one together that random with your placement of all your different embellishments always looks better than all mirrored. So make sure that you vary it and break it all up. It's just more pleasing to the eye. So now we're gonna go ahead and make our, the little bows that we tie around that rope at the bottom. And I'm actually going to make a little black and white one. And in this case, I've just folded my two pieces together, right sides together. You can see there that I have done some of them with two different colors, because when we tie it up, it does show those reverse sides. All you need to do is take your pattern template, draw all the way around it, mark in your markings for your opening. Now we're gonna take this to the machine and just sew exactly on that line all the way around and leave that opening. Once you've done that, you can just cut out and leave just a small seam allowance of about four to five millimetres. Turn it through, give it a press, and then we're going to top stitch the edge, just like I have here. It just gives a much better finish. So you can see I've gone ahead, turned that one through, pressed it all out, and then turned the little opening under. And as you sew that top stitch around the edge, of course it closes that opening. So that's all ready to go. Now it is as simple as just tying on your little bows around that kite string there. That just at little intervals in the colorway that suits you. You can, if you want more hold, I find they hang on beautifully. You can make a little knot in your rope between each one, um, but I find that they just sit there just beautifully. It's a perfect little shape. You can add as many as you like going down and um, I'm gonna get those all tied on and let's have a look at the end result. And that completes our beautiful little wall hanging kite, a little mini quilt, I guess you call it a mini quilt. 
absolutely beautiful with those colors and how good is that foam that adhesive foam is absolutely fantastic if you haven't used it i totally recommend it i'm absolutely obsessed with it i need to create you all a whole lot more mini quilts and things using this product so i've got all of my beautiful little bows added and when you hang this one on the wall you can pull up and hook up on a nail at the side there and show off that beautiful string with your you can pop your little bead on the end now another alternative for these is they make up really well using my little mini clippy bows and I'll put the link up the top there for these little hair bows and you can actually you could use these in place of these ties they will just clip on and you could do them all sorts of little colors they're just made up simply out of ribbon and that's another alternative and also it does make a fantastic little clip bow holder for a little girl's room so so many options there this one normally these sorts of projects i give away um, to family and friends this one i'm keeping for myself i'm definitely going to hang this up somewhere in my workroom so thank you so much for joining me and i hope you have a whole lot of happy fun with this one so thank you all for joining me today and if you have enjoyed this video you could give me a thumbs up that would be absolutely beaut also please go ahead and share all of your beautiful creations across your own social media platforms and uh, your different sewing groups and let's bring more people in to join us here and pay it forward and make use of all these beautiful free patterns. So speaking of communities we have a beautiful uh, Facebook group called share your Lisa pay creations and pay it forward and come along and join us there because we want to see your creations because it inspires us it certainly inspires me and we can all uh, help each other along the way lots of hints and tips available there a lot of my um, fabulous masterclass patrons are there and they certainly jump in to help um, so anything you need to know and I will cruise along there whenever I can I'm enjoying seeing some amazing work come up and certainly we have seen some beautiful new little puppies emerging I noticed this morning absolutely gorgeous work coming up so have a look at those from masterclass now if you're looking to join masterclass and step up I'm so excited for next month I can't tell you I think most of you know that my favorite fabrics to work with are not fur they are actually felt and fabrics and heavyweight fabrics so I'm really excited about next month's project I find it really hard to keep it to myself but I do need to do that but I'm working behind the scenes on that and uh, if you're if you are not a fur fan by all means join masterclass ready for next month because it's going to be amazing I can tell you one thing just one little hint it is an art doll so I hope you're really going to enjoy it also right here on pay it forward our next project together I need you to get your Sherpa ready so make sure you have your Sherpa ready because we're going to be making that beautiful cuddle Easter bunny made of Sherpa so any color you like and uh, I'm really looking forward to presenting that to you all so thank you all very much for your support everybody remember if you want to talk to me on one on one go right ahead and follow me on Instagram that uh, link is just here and you can chat to me ask me anything you like I'm an open book so looking forward to seeing more of these little kites flying high um, let's fill up Facebook page with color this week so in the meantime everybody look stay safe keep on being creative have a wonderful week and pay all of those good things forward until next time it is Huru from me